Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers. And in this video, I will teach you what happens when different sizes or brands of solar panels get wired to each other in the same solar array. Now this video is episode number 12 in a series of videos where I teach you all of the basic electrical skills and concepts you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now two quick things before we get started. Number one, I'll be going through this information pretty quickly. Now if you need this information slowed down, you can find all of the diagrams and the math involved in this video uh, in the accompanying blog post. Number two, I'll also briefly cover the effects that wiring solar panels in series parallel and series parallel has on the array. Now, if you already grasped that concept, uh, I've included some timestamps at the bottom of this video uh, where you can skip ahead to the appropriate section as you wish. Now, let's get started. So before we talk about mixing solar panel sizes, let's have a crash course on how wiring solar panels in parallel versus series affects their voltage and amperage. Two key points here. Number one, wiring solar panels in series will add their voltages together while their amperages stay the same. And number two, wiring solar panels in parallel will add their amperages together while their voltages stay the same. So let's check out some math in more detail on how this actually works. Here we see four 100 watt solar panels wired in parallel, which means that all of the positive wires are connected together and all of the negative wires are connected together. And then they go to the charge controller. Now, since wiring solar panels in parallel will add their amperages while their voltages stay the same, we would add five amps plus five amps plus five amps plus five amps to get a total of 20 amps at 20 volts headed into the charge controller. Now we installed 400 watts of solar panels and by using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that 20 volts times 20 amps equals 400 watts for 100% array efficiency. Now this means that of the 400 watts of panels that we installed, we can expect to see all 400 watts of power heading into the charge controller under ideal conditions. In this next example, we see four 100 watt solar panels, same as before, except this time they're wired in series, which means that the positives and the negatives of neighboring panels are wired together with the positives and negatives of the end panels going to the charge controller. Since wiring solar panels in series will add their voltages while their amperages stay the same, we would add 20 volts plus 20 volts plus 20 volts plus 20 volts to get a total array voltage of 80 volts and five amps heading into the charge controller. Now we installed 400 watts of solar panels and by using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that 80 volts times five amps equals 400 watts for 100% array efficiency. This means that of the 400 watts of panels installed, we can expect to see all 400 watts of power heading into the charge controller under ideal conditions. Now in this example, it's the same for 100 watt solar panels shown as before, except this time they're wired in series parallel. In this array, pairs of panels wired in series with the two resulting series strings are wired in parallel. Since solar panels wired in series adds their voltages together while their amperages stay the same, we would add 20 volts plus 20 volts, which gives us 40 volts and five amps for each of the two series strings. Since series strings wired in parallel adds their amperages together while their voltages stay the same, we would add five amps plus five amps for a total of 10 amps at 40 volts heading to the charge controller. Now we installed 400 watts of solar panels and by using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that 40 volts times 10 amps equals 400 watts for 100% array efficiency. This means, yet again, that of the 400 watts of panels installed, we can expect to see all 400 watts of power heading into the charge controller under ideal conditions. So now that we have our solar panel array basics covered, uh, let's talk about wiring different sizes of solar panels into the same array. For this first example, we have two 200 watt solar panels and two 100 watt solar panels. The two 100 watt solar panels are operating at 20 volts and five amps, while the 200 watt solar panels are operating at 25 volts and eight amps. Now, if we were to wire all of these panels in parallel, solar panels wired in parallel as their amperages while their voltages stay the same, this means that we would add eight amps plus eight amps plus five amps plus five amps for a total of 26 amps heading to the charge controller. 
Now, although the volts stay the same in a parallel wired array, since we have different panel voltages, we must use the lowest common denominator, which is 20 volts. So we have 20 volts at 26 amps heading to the charge controller. Now we installed 600 watts of solar panels, and by using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that 20 volts times 26 amps equals 520 watts for only 86% array efficiency. So this means that of the 600 watts of panels installed, we can expect to see only 520 watts of power heading into the charge controller under ideal conditions. For this next example, we have the same two 200 watt solar panels and two 100 watt solar panels. The two 100 watt solar panels are operating at 20 volts and five amps, and the 200 watt panels are still operating at 25 volts and eight amps. Now, if we were to wire all of these panels in series, solar panels wired in series adds their voltages while their amperages stay the same. So we would add 25 volts plus 25 volts plus 20 volts plus 20 volts to get a total of 90 volts heading to the charge controller. Now, although the amps stay the same in series wired arrays, since we have different panel amperages, we must use the lowest common denominator, which is five amps. So we have 90 volts at five amps heading to the charge controller. Now we installed 600 watts of solar panels and by using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that 90 volts times five amps equals 450 watts for only 75% array efficiency. So this means that of the 600 watts of panels installed, we can expect to only see 450 watts of power heading into the charge controller under ideal conditions. Now, let's say we were able to find solar panels of different wattages, but their voltages are the same, or at least really close. This array shows mismatched panel sizes of 100 watts and 200 watts, but we were able to find panels with similar voltages. Wiring the similar wattage solar panels in series would yield 40 volts at 10 amps for the 200 watt panels and 40 volts at five amps for the 100 watt panels. Now wiring those two series strings in parallel would yield 40 volts at 15 amps since 10 amps plus five amps equals 15 amps and the volts stay the same at 40. Now we installed 600 watts of solar panels and by using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that 40 volts times 15 amps equals 600 watts for 100% array efficiency. So this means that of the 600 watts of panels installed, we can expect to see the full 600 watts of power heading into the charge controller under ideal conditions. Great, so we can just always wire similar panels in series and wire those series strings in parallel, right? Not so fast. Same solar panels as last time, but this time we're going to try to get an 800 watt array by using three 200 watt panels and two 100 watt panels. If the three 200 watt solar panels were wired in series and the two 100 watt solar panels were wired in series, and then those two series strings were wired in parallel, here's how the math would look. Solar panels wired in series gets their voltages added together while their amperages remain the same. So for the 200 watt panels, we would add 20 volts plus 20 volts plus 20 volts for a series string total of 60 volts at 10 amps. For the series string with the 100 watt panels, we would add 20 volts plus 20 volts for a series string total of 40 volts at five amps. Since series strings wired in parallel gets their amperages added together while their voltages remain the same at the lowest common denominator, we would add 10 amps plus five amps for a total of 15 amps at 40 volts headed to the charge controller. Now we installed 800 watts of solar panels and by using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that 40 volts times 15 amps equals 600 watts for 75% array efficiency. Now this means that of the 800 watts of panels we installed, we can expect to see only 600 watts of power heading into the charge controller under ideal conditions, which means that the two 100 watt panels are effectively useless in this array. And by using just the three 200 watt panels in series, we, we could expect the same amount of power output with fewer panels and lower cost. 
And finally, and perhaps the most dramatic example, this is a specific question from somebody in my DIY camper crew private group, and I thought it was a great example to bring up on the channel here. They had six 200 watt panels wired in a series parallel configuration for a total of 1200 watts of solar with 100% array efficiency. Everything was perfect. But they found they had room for one more panel on their roof and wanted to wire it into the array in parallel with the other series strings. Now I had to talk them out of it, and here's why. Since series wired solar panels get their voltages added together while their amperages remain the same, this means that both of the series strings have a voltage of 51 volts and an amperage of 11.76 amps. Now, solar panels or series strings wired in parallel get their amperages added together while their voltages operate at the lowest common voltage. This means that the entire array would operate at 17 volts and 35.28 amps. So using Watt's law of volts times amps equals watts, we can see that the maximum amount of watts that we could see out of this system is 600 watts. So since they already had 1200 watts of solar in a perfectly configured series parallel configuration to total 1200 watts heading into the charge controller, adding an additional panel would actually cut their array output in half. So moral of the story, unequal solar panels can be used in the same array, but proper array planning is critical to avoid array inefficiencies. And if array inefficiencies are unavoidable, just make sure that you know this ahead of time and account for this in your power audit. And once you understand these concepts, you can really have some fun mixing and matching solar panels to work around vent fans, air conditioners, or whatever else you have mounted up on top of your camper. And that wraps up this video. Now in the next video, I am going to teach you when you need to versus when you do not need to use fuses in your solar array. So hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when that goes live. Now I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it'd be awesome if you'd share it with somebody or a group who you think could benefit from it, and leave this video a thumbs up. Drop any questions you've got in the comment section below. Subscribe if you wanna see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video.